Hey everybody, welcome into this Photoshop tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. I'm really excited for this one. It's 10 Photoshop skills that you absolutely need to know. These are so powerful. They're kind of hidden, in fact. I didn't just go for like obvious stuff like, hey, the brush tool, layer, stuff like that. These are kind of like hidden powerful features in Photoshop. And I also am proud to announce I shored up my desk, so no more of the wobbly monitor it really should cure the issue. I spent some time and I really shored the desk. It's a homemade desk. It's got really tall, skinny legs. And that's why my, my desk would wobble as much as it would wobble. But it is nice having a sturdy desk. I'm not going to lie. So 10 hidden powerful features in Photoshop. Let's jump right in and take a look here. The first feature is liquefying facial features. And you might say, oh, liquefy filter, we've all done that. Well, here, right click on a layer, we'll convert it to a smart object because that's just good practice. And then we're going to go filter, liquefy. Now, in liquefy, and this is a newer feature of Photoshop, we have this kind of head option. You can see it's called the face tool. The hotkey is the letter A. And we've got these kind of heads up displays where Photoshop will automatically detect whether or not their face is in your image. Sometimes it doesn't do that good a job. Uh, now, for the most part, it does a really, really good job. But sometimes if a head is tilted a little bit too much in one direction or upside down, it might have some trouble. You may have to actually rotate your Photoshop document uh, to target that face if you absolutely need to make a change. We have these heads up uh, display options where like we can grab one of his eyes here and just resize the eye and you can see that it's going to size both eyes. So we've made both eyes huge. We could like stretch them out, make them wider or make them more narrow and same thing uh, for the top and the bottom. We can make them kind of taller or maybe not quite so tall, whatever you're doing. We're going to make his eyes kind of ridiculous. For her, we can make her eyes a little bit bigger, right? Some big nice eyes for her. Push her nose in a little bit. You can push the nose in from the sides or even spread it out. You can see I can do the same thing over here with his face. I'm going to pull down on his forehead maybe a touch. Uh, we can narrow up the face a little bit, narrow that, uh, make the jawline a little bit more narrow, and either pull the jaw out, we can push the jaw in. Uh, over here with the mouth, we can pull the upper lip up here with the top of the mouth. We can pull the bottom lip down or make it kind of fat. Uh, you want to be careful using that. Uh, we can stretch the mouth out. We can make the mouth a little bit more narrow, probably stretch it out a little bit. And then the controversial feature is the smile feature where we can make uh, women smile. We can also, by the way, make men smile. It's not, uh, it, it doesn't discriminate. I'll put it to you that way. Um, so you can make people smile. You can make them maybe not smile quite as much. Uh, it's just a kind of a really neat, somewhat powerful feature. Sometimes it's not quite as convincing as others. But this is a really cool uh, option here in Photoshop. So I'm going to hit OK to commit that. A couple things we can do here. So because it's a smart uh, smart object, this is a smart filter. You can see liquify. We can shut it off. We can turn it on. We can see what we've done. I'm not saying we've done an amazing job here. That's not really the point of this little example. We can go back to filter liquify and apply a second facial liquify if we so please. And this time, check this out over here. Uh, we have face aware liquify tools. Uh, we can choose whether we want to work on face one or face two. And then you have all of these sliders where I can say, hey, you know, make his eyes bigger, make them huge. Um, all right, make the eye size. There we go. Monstrously large and wide. And we can, oh, we can even tilt the eyes. I forgot you can do that, by the way, uh, out here with this. You can sort of tilt the eyes. Uh, and, and by the way, the eyes, whenever you're working on eyes, they always work in conjunction with one another. So if you make one eye bigger or smaller or fatter or skinnier, it's going to do it to both eyes. And same thing with nose. You can do all this stuff with nose. Jump over to face two. Uh, if that's your thing, make her eyes a little bit bigger. And I mean, we're, we're going ridiculous now with, with what we're doing. Um, but you can do so much. And if you hit OK, you're going to see here that it actually stacks two liquify filters, one on top of the other. So we could, in theory, stack a ton of liquify filters and make some like crazy caricatures if we wanted to. Uh, and we can always go back and edit them later because after all it is a smart object now before we go on to step number two i want to let you guys know that i'm selling a course over on touchvid.com a link appeared somewhere right up over there you can click on that link and check it out if you decide to pick up a copy of the course it helps out tutvid helps me create more of these tutorials and i'd really appreciate it if not there's plenty of free content here and just watching and liking or commenting super cool with me i love you guys all right let's talk about step number two or feature number two hidden powerful feature number two and this is the uh, color lookup table, or the LUT. Uh, now, the way we get our LUT and what it does, well, we're going to be applying our color lookup table to this image. I have a, a PSD open. In fact, if I go window down here to djk.psd, I've got a photograph of a guy uh, that I took a picture of. And you can see I've added all of these adjustment layers. 
Essentially, a color lookup table is going to allow us to mesh all of those color or all of those adjustment layers into one kind of convenient stashed place so we can apply it to another image without having to select all these adjustment layers and copy it over. Now, it is typically good practice to like have just clean. You can see here uh, my, my layer masks are all nice and white and clean. They're not like partially hidden, partially showing. Uh, it's just nice to have that um, and I, I need adjustment layers. So what we can do is we can select this. We can go File export where's export there's export and choose color lookup tables now I'm gonna get an error here you're gonna see it's gonna say look I couldn't export it because this document has no background so what you need to do is select like the layer you want to be your background right there photo and I'm gonna go layer new and just choose background from layer it's gonna give me that locked background layer Photoshop needs that all right so we're gonna go file uh, export and choose color lookup tables as our option uh, you can give it whatever description you want this isn't really the file name I'm just gonna say DJK grading as in color grading uh, grid points medium and high both work really well I'm gonna stick with medium here 32 grid points is great and my format is gonna be cube it's just the one I usually go with you got a couple little options you'll see that we can play around with we're gonna hit OK and it's gonna say hey where would you like to save this uh, I'm gonna call this deep hyphen mood .lut. I'm just going to save it on the uh, the desktop just for the sake of simplicity. You can see it's going to just process that out really quickly. And then let's go window and go back to our colorlut.jpg. Now, I, I should sort of preface this by saying this is a simple 8-bit JPEG. It's not really a raw image. So you're going to see the image is going to degenerate a little bit when we apply this color lookup table because there's such a drastic color change that we're about to apply to this. Typically, you're making these big color adjustments and tonal adjustments. You want to be working with raw images, 16-bit images if possible. You're just going to get better results, smoother color transitions, things like that. Let's go ahead and do this anyway. Over here and add an adjustment or even up here layer, new adjustment layer. You have this color lookup option. The color lookup table is this icon right here. Go ahead and hit that and you're going to see you get a new color lookup table adjustment layer. Now, here under 3D LUT file, number one, you've got a lot of interesting presets that you can use here like let's see what moonlight does oh wow okay that's kind of crazy uh we could look at what does three strip look like all right you can see kind of changes things give you a little bit of like a, a faded look uh crisp warm what does that look like all right whatever but beside all of these presets you have load 3d LUT. So we're going to load this and then we got deepmood.cube right there on our desktop. We're going to select that and choose to open it. And you're going to see what it's going to do is it's going to apply all of those uh, adjustment layers right here within this one single color lookup table adjustment layer. Uh, one of the cool things you can do, that, that whole dot .cube thing, we can change the data order. So we can go like instead of RGB, BGR, and it's going to give us like this blue skin tone, which is kind of cool if you're doing an ice queen thing. But if you flip also the table order over to RGB, you get this kind of very like dirty, gritty, uh, faded, you know, vis go Instagrammy look uh, it's actually kind of cool um, it just it just is a different way of applying the information from those adjustment layers so I'm gonna go ahead and just set that back to RGB and a BGR for table order and that's it that's a color lookup table in Photoshop let's go on to the number three uh, feature this one's actually kind of quick so when you're creating a selection in Photoshop you're not always gonna place it in the exact spot it needs to be so you can hold down the space bar and you can move the selection before you commit the selection so let's say I I want to select that there we go I've got it but then when you're looking at it you decide you know what the selection is not quite right you can right click on the selection and choose transform selection and bring up your transform uh, options you can do things like perspective change to your selection so I can like squish it in like that right click and scale it and I can like stretch it out this way maybe stretch it out this way a little bit right click go back to free transform and we can rotate the selection a little bit like this all right, commit the change, and you have a vastly different selection than just your standard like rectangular marquee that you would drag out. So being able to move your selection, but also then right-click within that selection and free transform a selection once you actually have placed it, super duper useful. I'm going to Command or Control D to deselect that. Let's come over here to this file. We're going to talk a little bit about something called frequency separation. Very powerful. It's not really a hidden feature in Photoshop, uh, and it's actually not really a feature at all. It's a technique more than anything. Uh, there are a lot of people out there who have done tutorials on it, but I just want to give you a quick briefing and some of why I like frequency separation. It's an amazing way to retouch a photo, especially skin, but really any retouching. It's such a great way to use the healing brush. So here's how it works. You would select the image that you're retouching. And by the way, with this girl, 
She actually has really great, really clear skin. Uh, but there's some lines here in her forehead. Maybe we'll knock out. And again, this is just for the sake of this tutorial. And maybe we'll take this little red bracelet off of her. So we're going to duplicate the background layer. Commander Control J. I'm going to do it twice. I'm going to name the top layer High Hyphen Freak. So high frequency. And then this is going to be the low hyphen freak for the, well, I can't spell today. There we go. Low freak for low frequency. I'm going to shut the high frequency layer off. I'm going to zoom back out so we can see the entire image. So I've, I'm, I've selected the low frequency layer. Now on the low frequency layer, we want to uh, preserve the colors of the image, basically. And we're going to try to split the colors of our image from the details of the image. So to just preserve the color down here, we're going to blur this image filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And usually something like 15 pixels is great. Depends on the size of your image you're just looking to basically soften out all the details and make sure you preserve all of the color that's essentially the goal here so, so you might be able to get away with 10 pixels you might need 25 again just depends on the size of your image hit ok for the gaussian blur then turn on the high frequency layer select the high frequency layer and we're going to go image apply image now here under apply image we got to do a couple things number one we want to apply our high frequency layer to the low frequency layer so you need to select that from the layer drop down menu channel rgb that's great this is also very important. Blending mode of subtract is a must. Opacity of 100%. And a scale of 2 and an offset of 128 almost always is going to be exactly what you need. So scale of 2, offset of 128, and hit OK. You can see we're getting this very sort of blown out, ultra high clarity, uh, high pass looking uh, effect. These are all the sharpened edges of our image. These are all the details. We're going to set this to a blend mode of linear light. You're going to see it's going to blend us back down to essentially looking exactly like our initial image looked. But the advantage is we can we can edit the details of the image without affecting the color. So let's just, I mean, just a very, very easy example would be something like her forehead here. So we can grab our, let's go with the healing brush. Not the spot healing brush, but the healing brush. We're going to make sure we sample just the current layer. We just want to work on this details layer. And I'm going to grab my Wacom pen here and make my brush a little bit smaller. I'm going to hold down my Alter Option key. I'm going to sample from up here. And we can paint right along here and get rid of that little uh, line in her forehead. You can see we've got some messed up action happening there. We can just paint that right away. Just such a fast, beautiful way to get great, great skin texture. Um, and you can just go over your skin really as finely as you want and retouch every tiny little blemish all the way down to the pixel. And you'll get kind of that very beauty uh, beauty style retouched skin if you if you really like that. Let's move down here to her wrist here and let's check out uh, this little bracelet. So I'm going to make my brush a little bit larger and I'm going to sample right up here because I'm going to move over the bracelet right here and paint that away and then move up over her skin and you can just see how just how cleanly and easily this is retouching it now there's a little bit of red residue left behind because remember the color is on the low frequency layer we're just getting rid of the detail of that bracelet we we're going to jump down to the low frequency layer next and eradicate the color i'll show you exactly how to do that but for now we're focusing here on the detail so i'm going to sample up here on her wrist we're going to duplicate the wrist there where it kind of runs into the blue uh, dress top and I'm going to make my brush really small and just get rid of that little bit of bracelet detail left there. And you can spend as much time as you want really making this perfect. Um, I just want to do this kind of for the sake of making this nice and clean. All right, then we'll get onto low frequency layer. And you could do a number of things. You could try just using the healing brush, right, like this, and go over uh, the colors. That tends to be a little wonky uh, with, the, such, with, with a, a layer full of such soft uh, color and really not much detail. So I typically will go with like a clone stamp brush set to an opacity of 50 or 60. Make that brush much, much smaller here. We're, we've got a huge brush. And then I would just sample, make sure that you're sampling just the current layer, by the way. Sample like right here. And just go ahead and start painting over uh, the color. And you can see it's going to blend in the skin so quickly and so easily. Uh, it's really quite amazing. So just like that, we can go ahead and get rid of that uh, bracelet. And there's a little lighter line there. We'll get rid of that. Now, you may be asking why frequency separation. This is a very simple skin retouch job we did here. But if you're doing something ultra complex, this is such a great and, and even non-destructive way to go in and do highly, highly detailed skin uh, retouching. And all, virtually all of the best retouchers use a technique fairly similar to this, if not this exact method, uh, to do their skin retouching. It's just so good. It gives you so much control. It gives you so much power. You don't have to worry about mixing uh, different colors. You really preserve true skin tone as much as possible while getting beautiful uniform textures. Um, so let's uh, shut those two layers off. I just want to give you a quick uh, comparison. So if we zoom in on this bracelet here, and uh, we grab the healing brush, and I say, all right, let's... Let's just get rid of this, so I'll sample up there just like I did with uh, 
just like I did with the frequency separation, I paint over all of this. You can see I'm getting this very noticeable light track mark across her arm there, um, and we get kind of that there. Um, so part of the advantage to frequency separation is you're just going to have smoother color transitions. So that's without frequency separation. That's with frequency separation. So you have two very different results using really the same tool, but the technique is different, and the technique is frequency separation. It's a really powerful uh, technique to know. Definitely something you want to get familiar with, especially if you're into uh, retouching or especially the high-end retouching game in Photoshop. So let's move along to number five. And number five is using calculations, but using calculations, which maybe you've never heard of, but using calculations particularly to make hair selections. Now we're going to make a very, very fast selection of this young lady here. Um, so it may not be as perfect as it should be, but I've got a bunch of other tutorials on selecting hair and you'll see, uh, you can check out any of them and you'll see that this is an amazing technique, um, but we don't want to spend 20 minutes working on one image, so I'm going to try to blow through this pretty fast. Here's what you do. You open up your image. We've got an image here. I am kind of cheating here because while she has frizzy hair, it is over a relatively contrasting background. Again, I have tutorials on advanced hair selections. You'll want to check some of them out if you're interested in, in really, you know, diving into the nitty-gritty of selecting hair. All right, so we go images, calculations, and what I've got here, this is a pretty standard setting, and you can see it, it jumps right to it because Photoshop knows I use it a lot. In fact, I must have used it recently. Um, here's what I typically do. Everything kind of stays normal. In fact, if you, if you fire this up, here's probably what you see, just like that. Red channel being uh, mixed with red channel, no inversion set with a blend mode of multiply. We want her hair to appear white. That's basically it. If her hair appears white and everything else appears black, we know we're going to get a great hair selection. So what I like to do first is just invert both of these channels. So when I do that, you can see, all right, that the, what we want selected is lighting up pretty well. Her skin is pretty dark, but what we can do is just select that with like the lasso tool and fill it with white. I'll show you how to do that in a second. Uh, and then you just kind of add different channels together and see what gives you the most contrast. See, green channel to green channel is actually pretty good here. Um, blue, I think green channel to green channel is actually the best. It gives us the most lightness where we need it you know, with her sweater and her hair, and the background is as dark as possible. Blend mode of multiply is almost always what you want to use. You can use add and subtract as well, but they're a bit hit and miss. It all depends on the image. We're not going to get into that here. Hit OK. Um, now, oh, you know what? I probably should undo that. I, I need to show you what I, the, one of the important things here. I'm going to go back to image calculations. I still have all my settings. I'm outputting this to a new channel, so result new channel. Hit OK, and you can see here over in the channels panel, there we go. Great, we've got a new channel. One of the first things I'm going to do with this channel is hit Command or Control L to bring up levels, and I'm just going to boost all the blacks, and I'm going to boost all the whites. I want to be careful boosting the whites. There's a ton of edge detail there along her hair where we've got like frizzy, frizzy bits of hair that are, uh, that are definitely that are definitely still hanging out there. There we go, something like that. All right, that's probably cool. Something like that, hit OK. So we're just looking to, to make the background a bit darker and her a little whiter. I'm going to grab my lasso tool. I'm going to generally make a selection here around all of this interior stuff. Very rough selection. I'm going to fill it with white. So for my foreground color set to white, Alt, uh, Backspace, or Option, Delete on the Mac. Command or Control D to deselect that. And then I grab the brush tool. This is kind of where the cool stuff happens. Grab the brush tool and set it to a blend mode of either overlay or soft light. I'm probably going to roll with soft light because it tends to be a little bit, uh, a little bit softer. Um, and watch what we can do here. So I'm painting with white. I'm going to right click. I'm going to make my brush very soft. Make the size a little bit larger. And I'm going to paint with white over the edges of her hair. So you can see what's going to happen is this the brush is only going to target the areas that already have some white in them and kind of intensify the white. Now the nice thing about this is not only can we get kind of a nice edge selection, it's going to be far from perfect guys because we are we're blowing through this. Um, and I'm not even really, honestly, I'm not even really worried about the edge of her sweater. You can use the pen tool or some other selection tool to just grab a selection of that. Uh, I want to fill my foreground color now with black. I'm going to set my blend mode. Whoop. Let's make sure we're in the right image here. There we go. Set my blend mode for the brush tool back to normal. I'm going to paint with black out here and just fill all this junk out here with black just because we really don't want to select any of this stuff. We're going to work on the edge. Obviously, the edge is really what needs our help. All right, so we get rid of most of that stuff, and then we set this black, uh, black back to the blend mode of soft light. And we can even zoom in when we do this if you're really concerned about... Uh, you know, cleaning things up and making it nice. And we're just going to paint away. And you can see that even though black is hitting uh, areas that are painted in with white, it's really not just automatically making it uh, disappear and filling it with black because it's more or less working with areas that already have black pixels and simply increasing the contrast, which is going to sort of push back uh, the, the hair that's sticking out. I'm going to flip it back to white here. 
and push this out a little bit. What I need to be careful of is if I have too much white coming off of the hair, we're going to get like a, a really strong halo all around her. All right, I want to invert this channel. So I'm going to hit Command or Control I, all right, just like that. You can see this is, I mean, this is it's kind of a mess down here. But again, we're not going to be too, too concerned with that. That's not the point of this tutorial. Turn on the RGB composite layer. We're going to command or control click our alpha channel here. We can shut it off, select RGB, the RGB composite, go back to layers. And here for the background layer, we're going to add a layer mask. So there we go. We make everything else disappear. Now I can tell on the edges of her hair, it is still a little bit see-through. Let's just drag her over to like the the color uh, the color lookup table image. And actually you can see, it, I mean, it needs a little bit of help, in which case we would grab the brush tool again, just have it set to a blend mode of soft light. You can see we need to paint white to make hair come back. So the white area of the mask is what's showing through. We're gonna make sure we're painting with white and we can just paint over the edges of her hair and bring back more of the detail on the edges of her hair. And you can see, even though I'm painting over uh, areas that definitely should be showing the background because they're solid black in the mask, uh, it's not really letting us bring that stuff back. It's just bringing back great edge detail on her hair. So it's not the most perfect selection, but you can see how fast it can be to use calculations to make complex selections, even if it's not hair, to make really complex selections in Photoshop with relative ease and, and kind of quickly. Let's move over here and talk about selective sharpening. I'm going to set my uh, brush tool back to the blend mode of normal. So selective sharpening in Photoshop, this is how I typically do it. Let's say I have an image here. I'm just going to uh, I'm going to change the hue saturation of this just a little bit. Maybe make it a little bit more pink and dump a touch of the saturation just like that. All right, so I have an image. Let's say there's like 80 layers. I would merge it all to a new layer. So I use the hotkey Control shift alt e that's Command-Shift-Option-E on the Mac, and this would be my sharpening layer. So actually, you know what? I'm not even going to name it. So here's what I would do. I would do something like jump into quick mask mode, right? So that's this little button here. You can also hit the letter Q, jump into quick mask mode, double-click on the quick mask mode icon, actually, and just make sure that you have color indicates selected areas checked. The default is masked areas. We want to go with selected areas. Make sure we turn Turn quick mask mode on, and we're going to paint with black. I'm going to paint with black here inside this boat. It's just a very rough selection, all right? Because inside of these boats, I want to apply very fine sharpening. So I'm just painting over these areas to get like a very rough selection. You can be as precise or not precise with this particular technique as you like. Uh, all right, so once we do that, hit the letter Q. It's going to load all that as a selection. Then I'll do something like choose select... Uh, modify feather and maybe give it like a 250 pixel feather. Great. I'm going to hit Commander Control J now. It's going to grab the interior of the boats, pop them up to a new layer. Now, on this new layer, I'm going to go filter, other, high pass. You may want to zoom into 100%, make sure you're zoomed in nice and close. And you can see that we're going to apply this nice high pass adjustment. I'm going to hit OK, and I'm going to change the blend mode of this layer to overlay. So what we've just done is we've applied sharpening just to the interior parts of the boat. The reason that this is interesting is because let's say we want to apply even more sharpening to like the water areas. Well, we would go back to that sharpening layer from which we were sampling. We're going to jump back into quick mask mode by hitting the letter Q. And I'm just going to paint a rough selection over all of the, uh, all the water out here. All right, like so. Something like that. Maybe I'll even grab the little dock walkway area here. Hit the letter Q. Again, I just like to go select modify feather just to feather the edges. 250, anywhere between like 250 um, and 400 pixels is typically what I'm looking for here. I'm going to hit Command or Control J again to pop that up off of the background layer. Uh, and then I'm going to go filter other high pass. Now for this high pass, I want to crank up the radius uh, quite a bit. So maybe something like seven or eight. You can see that's really going to bring out some detail in the water. It's not perfect. You can see even a little color haloing. If you see color haloing, image adjustments, desaturate can be a good idea, just like that. And you can set this to a blend mode of like overlay or soft light, something like that. Uh, and the, the, the whole point here is we have two different levels of sharpening. We have a very fine sharpening that's going into the middle of the boats and a very kind of bulbous radial sharpening that's being applied out here where there's softer details. This is particularly useful if you're doing portrait photography. You know, eyes, nose, lips, skin maybe needs one level of sharpening. Hair might need another level of sharpening. The blouse might need another level of sharpening or the guy's jacket. Uh, and then pants or shoes and the background and the scene might need even other levels of sharpening. So this is a great way to sort of layer in sharpening exactly where it needs to go. It's so fast. It's so easy. Um, it's just a way that I've kind of fallen in love with. And obviously you would want to name your layers and really keep track of all of that uh, right there in your layers panel as well. All right, let's move on over to 07 or the seventh step. And this is color range within a mask. Uh, so this is a really cool little feature of Photoshop. 
We've got this image of this girl. She's holding a little gift. And w let's say we get a note from the editor. Hey, we want to change every red thing in this photo. We want to change those red stripes and the red bow to like a hot pink. Uh, we say, hey, you know what? We can do that. And here's how we can do it. We can do something like use saturation adjustment layer, of course. And we can say, hey, great. We'll just target the reds. And we'll, we will shift the hue back uh, till it's like pink. Right? But the problem is you can see her skin is also all jacked up from it. That does not look good at all when it's that pink. Her hair is all funkified. Things are not looking great. So check this out. You can actually select the mask on an adjustment layer. And right down here in the layer mask properties panel, choose color range. Now here in color range, what we can do is we can select any area of the photo we want to constrain our color to. And you can see here, it's picking up the those red stripes right away. But like, let's say I select her skin. I can use a fuzzy and a slider and just keep that pink applied to her skin. Obviously, we don't want to do that. I do want to select the red in her shirt. So we're going to, and then I'm going to hold down shift maybe and sample more of the pinks. Uh, something like that. Great. Can I get this out here? Yep, I can get that out there. That's great. We're still getting some pink up here in her mouth. We can probably manually mask that away. What about the uh, pinks here in the uh, in the little bow? That's great. And we got some on the edges of her fingers, but we'll manually mask that away. We hit OK, and you can see that color range has automatically made that mask for us. Now, what I'll do is I will zoom in uh, with my brush tool. What I'll do is make sure I have the mask selected. I'm working with black and white here. I'm going to hit the letter X to set black as my foreground color, or flip my foreground and background color. Paint black up there, make sure we don't have any of her mouth changing color. And then also we want to get rid of the pink here on her fingers. Oh, we got rid of some of the pink there on that bow. And the nice thing about this is we don't even need to be exact where with where we paint, because remember the hue saturation adjustment layer technically is only targeting the red areas in the image, so that's great. Come in here and get rid of all of that stuff. And I'm painting with white now. I just the letter X to flip my foreground and background colors. And any of these areas in here where it didn't quite convert to pink, you can go in and just paint it, paint it white, and it's gonna, you know, switch it right to pink. It'll be nice and easy. Great, 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 great. Cool. That looks good. And maybe even we could take a look, see what it looks like if we sort of make her lipstick very, very kind of candy pink. And it's gonna obviously match the shirt, uh, or be relatively close to matching the shirt pretty well. And I'm just painting with white here, and you can go back over the lips as many times as you want. Uh, paint black wherever. Maybe you have some of the color, you know, spill into her mouth or out here under her skin. Something like that. We don't want her teeth looking purple or her cheeks. There we go. So I can back it out. And you can see, just like that, very quickly, we create this huge saturation adjustment layer, and we change the color of the reds to this kind of very magenta hot pink. Uh, and using color range in our mask like that is so fast and so easy and so amazing. Uh, it's definitely a feature that you've got to know. So powerful. All right, let's move over here to the next image, to one of my favorite features of Photoshop, and it is curves. We're going to use a curves adjustment layer here. It's this icon right here. Now, here's though how curves work. I've got a bunch of tutorials on curves, by the way. Uh, I'll try to remember to link one up here in the tutorial. Uh, here's how curves works. You pull up, you add light. You pull down, you reduce light. You make things darker. Whenever you click on a point in here, you add a point. So you can see I click to add a point. I just drag away to get rid of a point, and everything returns to normal. Uh, we also have this little finger slider here. So let's say we, we move our mouse up here and we say we want to make this brighter. We click and we drag up. It's going to make that brighter. And then we say, hey, you know what? We need to make the crowd darker. So I select down here with the crowd, drag down, make the crowd darker. All right, something like that. You can see the byproduct has been we have a much more contrasty image. I'm going to delete this curves adjustment layer. Let's create a new curves adjustment layer. We also have a histogram. So over here is the darker, darkest parts of the image. So let's say we pull down a little bit here in the darker parts of the image, and we pull up a little bit in the brighter parts of the image. We've created an S curve here in curves, and that's a, a very easy way to quickly increase contrast. I'm going to just uh, drag these away. You can also do something like drag up on the black point, maybe drag down on the white point, and you get like a very faded effect, right? Reduce contrast. We can also go into the color channel. So in the red color channel, if you pull up on red, you obviously add red, but the opposite of red is cyan. So if you pull down on the red channel, you introduce cyan. Let's actually introduce a little bit of red here to kind of some of the mid-tones. So I just dragged up a little bit. We also have a green channel. Now, a green channel, obviously, if you pull up on green, it's going to add green. You pull down on the green channel, it's going to add magenta because the opposite of green is, you guessed it, magenta. Let's add some magenta to the shadow, uh, to the shadowy areas, and some green to the highlights. In fact, a lot of green to the highlights, something like that. We'll go down to the blue channel. Now, if you pull up on the blue channel, you get blue. If you pull down on the blue channel, you get yellow. The opposite of blue is yellow. Uh, so let's infuse some blue into these shadows here and then maybe pull some yellow into the highlights or just maybe pull the highlights back kind of in line with the way they were. So you can see there's before, there is after. 
One of the amazing things about Curves is it's such a powerful way to quickly uh, edit and adjust the contrast, the tone, and the color in your photos, and you have so much control over it. There's so much precision, um, and I'm really just touching the tip of the iceberg here with the Curves adjustment. That's the basics of how to use it. In my mind, an absolute must-know as you uh, continue your journey here through Photoshop. There's so much you can do with Curves. Um, and again, I've got some other tutorials on it. I'll try to remember to link one of them here. But Curves are super powerful and really, really amazing. All right, let's move on to number nine. Adjustment layers. Don't forget to pair adjustment layers with blend modes. You can really do some amazing things with them. Take a look at this. We can do something like a channel mixer adjustment layer. Tick on monochrome. Uh, monochrome. I almost said monochromatic, monochrome, and uh, maybe adjust our sliders. Don't don't blow out the image too badly, and then just set the blend mode to something like multiply. This will typically give you like a, a very moody, muted type effect on your photo. Not every photo is conducive to this effect, but if the lighting's right, the subject is right, it can be a really cool effect. Channel mixer, monochrome, set it to multiply, reduce and adjust the opacity until it looks good. What's well, something else you can do? Well, you could add a levels or a curves adjustment layer if you like, and just set the blend mode to soft light. It's a very quick way to just increase the contrast of your image. You can see, there you go, we just increased the contrast just like that. Levels adjustment layer, set to the blend mode to soft light. You can also do something like a gradient map. Choose one of these, you know, any of the default gradient maps, or I've got this custom one I created, which is kind of a blue going to like a seafoam green, and then set it to the blend mode of soft light, and we get kind of this cool color effect. It's a, it's a very great way to color grade images. And another kind of interesting thing you can do here is uh, you can actually use solid color adjustment layers, new fill layer, solid color. I'm going to say OK here. I am going to, let's go with like a blue. So we'll just hit blue. And we'll set this to the blend mode of hue. And you can see we're looking to change the color of her skirt here from green to blue. So then we would select the layer mask, hit Command or Control I to fill it with black. Just going to flip it from black to white. And then you can zoom in with your brush tool, obviously. You probably know the drill here. Uh, set your foreground color to white, make the brush tool a little bit larger. And you can just paint in here, or you could use, well, see, part of the problem with using something like um, color range is you're probably going to pick up the stalks of the flowers. So you just go through and paint in wherever you want the blue to be. And uh, that's it. So I'll just zip through this real quick, and we'll be right back. All right, so you can see it's a rough paint job, but very, very quickly uh, using a technique like this, you can very realistically change the color of all kinds of objects, whether it's a shiny object or a dull object. Uh, black and white can be difficult to introduce color because black and white are really the uh, the absence of color or just like color completely maxed out in the case of black. Uh, so those can be tough to adjust, uh, but any kind of color in between, you can do a lot. Yellows in general tend to be tough for some reason in Photoshop, um, but a lot of colors you can very quickly, very easily change. You got the hue uh, blend mode, and you also have color if you want to change the saturation of the object underneath as well. Um, the, between those two blend modes, you really want to just play with them and see what works best depending on your application. Sometimes color is going to just be dynamite. Um, sometimes color is going to just look way, like just way too much, way too much saturation, the whole nine yards. All right, so number 10, <laughs> kind of this crazy photo. I just had to find a way to include this in one of my tutorials. Um, the camera raw filter, um, and specifically using dehaze to kind of introduce contrast in an interesting way. So I'm going to right click on my layer here and choose convert to smart object. Just again, good practice. Smart filters just tend to be better. Filter camera raw filter and it's going to open up the camera raw dialog box particularly useful when you're we you haven't shot raw and you only have access to a jpeg but you want something in the camera raw uh, the camera raw dialog box two of the things i find really helpful are the temperature sliders or the white balance sliders temperature and tint right if you need to just make an adjustment something's too orange or too blue and you want to quickly come in and make a couple adjustments amazing to have this uh, that uh, as a feature that you can use on any layer in Photoshop, anything uh, that you bring into Photoshop. And then also over here, dehaze uh, to kind of boost up uh, our contrast in a really interesting way. It's very different from like a curves contrast adjustment or a straight contrast uh, contrast slider adjustment. And when I do that, I've got to go over to HSL and make sure I knock down the saturation of the reds and the blues, something like that and then hit OK, and you can see very quickly, we infuse this really cool mid-tone punch contrast adjustment to our image. And in fact, when I look at this here, I'm going to just drop this down and double click on Camera Raw Filter. Uh, Camera Raw also has really great sharpening, so we can just throw some great sharpening in there, uh, pull the masking up a little bit just so we pull some of the sharpening out of the wall so as not to uh, really add even more noise, hit OK. And there we go. So that is pretty much it. But actually, before I let you go, I want to give you five quick tips on the way out the door. Pretty much anywhere in Photoshop where you see these opacity sliders like this, if you hover over the word opacity or fill, you get a little scrubby slider. Very quick and easy way to change opacity. If we grab the text tool, this is tip number two, and we type something in here like 
pig at the office. To quickly commit the change uh, for your type, command, return, control, enter on the PC, and you change whatever bit of text uh, that you are editing. Another thing you can do is on the, or in the history panel, window history, you can go to the settings here and you can choose history options and you can choose to tick on make layer visibility changes undoable. Why is this important? Well, because if I shut off the text and then I realize that, ah, you know what? I want to back that up and see what it looks like with the text again. Command or control Z and it actually will toggle layer visibility for you. Uh, it can be really useful and really nice to have. One of the other nice things is, let's say we have a bunch of layers here in this document and like three of them are shut off. When we're looking to clean up the document, you can go layer, delete, and choose to delete the hidden layers in the document. Hey, would you like to delete the hidden layers? Absolutely. And there we go. We're down to just one layer of text and our background image. And also one of the other really cool things is if you select the move tool and you make a selection, like so let's just select this wall over here, right, or just generally select the wall, and then we select the move tool, we have these align options. So I have the, the type layer selected right here. I can choose to align uh, vertical and horizontal centers right there within that wall. Command or control D to deselect. And those are five little tips on top of the ten hidden slash powerful features in Photoshop. So for facial liquefaction, for color grading and lookup tables for curves and frequency separation and about six, seven, eight, nine, nine other things. No, 10, 11 other things in Photoshop. Math was never my strong suit. For all that stuff in Photoshop, that's it. Get it, got it, good. NathanielDodsonTechVid.com. I'll catch you next.